My name is uh, Jaak van Laar. I'm the uh, Editor-in-Chief of uh, Rheumatology and it's really a great pleasure to have uh, Joachim Listing here from the German Rheumatism Research Center in Berlin who's published uh, an, a review about the risk of infections associated with rheumatoid arthritis with its comorbidity and, um, and treatment. Um, Joachim, welcome to this um, interview room. Um, could you explain to us what the uh, reason was why you wrote this review? Why is this an important topic for uh, readers? Thank you for inviting me for this uh, interview, uh, Jan. Um, for, we published uh, already in, in, uh, eight years ago the first um, manuscript uh, and uh, in this manuscript, we showed that TNF inhibitors increase the risk of uh, uh, serious infections. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on, when, in the years, um, seven other, other manuscripts came out. And they suggest that the uh, infection risk is only increased uh, during the first months mm -hmm. after start of treatment. Mm -hmm. And I never understand this. And, and I've mm -hmm. uh, for this should go into detail mm -hmm. and uh, analyze and, and review the evidence we have right. at this time mm -hmm. and, and, and published it. Right. Yes. So what, what's unique about the um, kind of findings that you, you describe here? What's uh, yeah, kind of novel when compared to previous publications? Um, we tried to uh, focus on the infection is on the individual patient level, right, right. not only on the cohort level. Okay. So, and, and on the individual patient level, you have to consider that the risk factors mm -hmm. are changing at the time. Right. If you change your treatment, or the patient uh, becomes uh, in a better condition because of the treatment, right. or in a bad condition because of the treatment, right. or becomes a new comorbidity. Right. And this changes over time. Also changes the, uh, the infection risk of an individual right. patient, and this is uh, important uh, to take into account. And if you understand these mm -hmm. uh, uh, changes on the patient level, you also better understand mm -hmm. what happens on the cohort level. Right. So some some of these factors, right, risk factors are basically stable, like like you know uh, yes. gender. Yes. Uh, but some factors, I, I guess, you refer to like yes. disease activity yes, yes. and use and dosage of medication are yeah. those factors which you yes. uh, actually allude to, right? Yes. And um, so one of the key critical questions which, which comes back in all these discussions is how c can you uh, dissect the effect of disease activity versus the use of immunosuppressive medication? Because obviously when disease activity goes up, um, you know, uh, immunosuppressive medication will yes. be tailored accordingly. So how, how did you kind of dissect this in, in your um, kind of review and what was your conclusion? Yes, um, this is especially true for the link between the uh, prednisone use mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the disease, disease activity and yes. infection capacity. And um, uh, in this respect we have to uh, consider whether a paper uh, investigated this uh, association um, uh, or not, mm -hmm. and uh, whether the paper was uh, able to distinguish between right. uh, both uh, risk factors. Right. So, and, um, so, um, and we found uh, an interesting, uh, uh, for us it was interesting, uh, a meta-analysis of uh, Leon Bruno and Keystone and others, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also uh, to some extent also our own work mm -hmm. uh, on the association between uh, glucocorticoid use and uh, uh, infection risk. Mm -hmm. so, so coming back to the, this, this question, right, so in, in terms of, you know, dosage of prednisone or you also mentioned functional ability yes. of the patient yes. versus disease activity. So what, what has a stronger impact on the risk of serious infections? Is it the disease activity? Is it the dose of prednisolone? Or is it the functional status of the patient? Uh, the evidence we have now yes. suggests, uh, uh, in my opinion, suggests yes. uh, the, the impact of 
higher dosages of prednisone right. is, is much more important okay. uh, than the impact of the uh, inflammation measured by the dust 28 scores or, or, or something. Or, or the uh, functional ability. Yes, and, and also functional ability has some impact, but right. uh, the higher dosages of prednisone has a, uh, have okay. a larger impact right. to, to, to right. my opinion. I mean, that's also clearly um, discussed and, and, you know, in table one, right, yes. of, of your yes. review, where you actually um, show how the interaction of prednisolone dose yes. and um, the use of DMARTs or TNF inhibitors um, influences this risk, right? Yes. And, mm -hmm. and so when you say high prednisolone dose, what, what was the uh, definition in this review? Uh, okay, we have to come uh, go back and uh, and uh, to uh, look what mm -hmm. papers are available mm -hmm. and and what uh, cut points mm -hmm. are used in these papers. Mm -hmm. In our own paper, we use the cut point of uh, 15 milligram right. uh, for the high dose, uh -huh. and 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 then we used another cut point of 7.5 milligram for the moderate. Mm -hmm. uh, Increased dose, right. and for both uh, groups, uh, dosage groups, we, we uh, observed an increased risk of serious infection, especially right. for this high dose uh, right. Uh, right. group. So, and yeah, and and so this this dose of prednisolone interacts with the presence of other risk factors yes. you describe, such as age, yes. um, the presence of chronic lung disease, yes. Yes. or the presence of chronic renal disease or the high number of treatment failures, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so now how did you, you know, how did you come up with these particular risk factors rather than maybe some other factors like um, serum IgG levels, which also have been described to influence the risk of serious infections? So what was prompted you to look at these particular risk factors? This come up from the literature, okay. and this, this come up from uh, um, we found that, that, that specific comorbidities mm -hmm. uh, like uh, chronic lung disease, mm -hmm. or, uh, chronic lung disease, or mm -hmm. uh, age, it is known mm -hmm. that oh, in older age the uh, risk of serious infection is increased, mm -hmm. not only by comorbid right. conditions. Right. And, uh, and when we had, uh, we, we, not, we knew from, uh, from the literature that our Scientists came up with this uh, increased risk in the very uh, early time after mm -hmm. initiation of TNF inhibitors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we had the hypothesis that this uh, this uh, is especially to mm -hmm. to a selection of patients mm -hmm. that you lost patients who are susceptible for infections mm -hmm. over time, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, and you have in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Of the treatment, uh, patients also received higher doses of prednisone. Mm -hmm. And then we investigated these mm -hmm. two factors in more detail, and we found mm -hmm. especially uh, strong associations mm -hmm. between both. Yeah. And you, uh, you know, uh, you will treat a, a, a patient. Um, the patients you treat for more than say t uh, 12 months with uh, a TNF inhibitor. These are patients who responded well to this treatment, and these are patients who tolerated well mm -hmm. to uh, this treatment. And these are patients who are different from, base, from those patients in uh, whom you discontinued mm -hmm. uh, the treatment. And this, is, this has to be also taken into account mm -hmm. if you uh, want to investigate the, the infection risk mm -hmm. on the individual level of a patient. Mm -hmm and, and uh, not only to describe what happens in your practice. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I've always learned that also apart from the, the daily dose, it's yes. also the cumulative prednisolone dose which uh, you know, imparts a risk. Um, so did you look, were you able to look at these studies to see whether, whether these studies reported cumulative dose and whether this was actually maybe as important or more important or less important than the actual daily dose. Yeah, Bill Dixon did a, 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 a nice study in this uh, respect and, mm -hmm. and he, he found that uh, the cumulative dose and especially the dose uh, during the last months right. uh, is the most important right. risk factors when the dose 
uh, of say more than 12 months ago. Mm -hmm. So, and, and therefore, in, in our analysis, we also right. consider this uh, average dose over mm -hmm. the last six months. Right, right. So, I guess in conclusion from your paper, I mean, uh, we can say that active rheumatoid is associated with an increased risk that's, yes. that's shown in by, by many others as well. Yes. And that's, um, that steroids, prednisolone use and biologicals in this case, TNF inhibitors, have a, an interacting role, right? And, mm -hmm. and they jointly increase the risk yes. significantly, yes. especially yes. with higher doses of yes. prednisolone. Yes. 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 Um, so, and, and, and then I guess that this risk score which you have developed yes. in, in Berlin um, somehow can help doctors and clinical practice to determine um, risk of a serious infections in individual patients. Is, yes. is that right? So yes, 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 yes. The test of your paper. Yes, we now uh, publish this on, on the website of, right, this, right. Uh, of this separate register. Right. Uh, so uh, physicians have the possibility to calculate it for right. their individual patients. Right. And, and uh, for me, it was important to show that the there is, uh, especially in the first months after yeah. start of treatment, an, a higher risk because yeah. of a combination of both, yeah. of a high yeah. disease activity, yeah. higher yeah. Uh, glucocorticoid dose and yes. TNFs, yes. Yes. And, and later on right. uh, the control of the disease activity right. by TNFs, uh, uh, you can taper down with the mm. brightness zone use yeah. uh, uh, mm. the dosage and, and then you can taper down right. the, the right. risk. Yeah. Okay, Jochen, uh, thank you very much for um, explaining uh, this. This was a useful, I think, addition to the uh, review, and um, good luck. Thank you.